get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of RX Bar, Quest Nutrition, Einstein Bagels, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, coaches, you know, anyone working with clients one-on-one, stop just trading time for dollars shift from working one-on-one to one-to-many, you can go to rise25.com, learn more, download the free dream product ladder, which is is basically a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps in untapped revenue in your business. Companies like Disney, Apple, Sporting Industries, they all use versions of the product ladder. Check out Rise25. Today, I am very excited. We have Sarah Sarah Chalos, co-founder of iHeartQuinoa with Ravi Jolly. Hey, Sarah. I'm excited because I Heart Quinoa is, I'm very into health, and anyone who is should check out this company. I Heart Quinoa makes superfoods accessible to consumers with a range of tasty food products, including quinoa based snacks, such as, you know, I made the mistake, Sarah, of going on your website because it just made me hungry. There's <laughs> Himalayan pink salt chocolate quinoa puffs, That's peanut nice. butter chocolate quinoa puffs and many, many more. And we'll talk about the range of products you guys have. And I know I want you to show show us some of them. They can be found in thousands of stores across the US and globally in places like Whole Foods, CVS, 7-Eleven, and of course on Amazon and their own website. Uh, Before iHeartQuinoa, Sarah studied engineering at MIT, worked in R&D and manufacturing at Abbott Laboratories, earned her MBA at Chicago Booth, consulted for big corporate clients at Bain & Company, Uh, The most impressive part is that Sarah does all this while raising two kids. Sarah, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I look at even the logos on the packaging are not always easy. So I'm curious, which was the hardest to get? Meaning you have have USDA, and this is not for all of them, but most of them, USDA organic, Mm -hmm. fair trade certified, Mm non-GMO, certified gluten-free, kosher, (laughs) and vegan. Like each one of those in themselves is a process for you guys to actually, so you can actually put it on the packaging. Yes. What was most difficult out of those? Um, I would say USDA organic is sort of the most stringent. I mean, it's very clear what the requirements are, but to uh, have a product that is 100% organic is very expensive and, you know, requires very full traceability. so that's why not all of our products are certified organic, yeah. but all of our products are certified non-GMO, um, which is also very difficult. They do a really good job of tracing all the ingredients back to all the subcomponents, mm. and there that is um, from a documentation perspective takes a really long time. Mm. Plus, everybody uh, when that certification came out, everybody was trying to get it, and so they had the non-GMO project was really backlogged, and so you'd ask they'd ask you a follow-up question, and then three months later right. they would look. The supporting documentation you sent in so yeah those are all challenging certifications to get but i think it's important you know because the consumer really needs to have people care confidence yeah and I, and I didn't know because you guys source from bolivia so talk a little about because the bolivian quinoa is different from other regions yes oh let, let me tell you yeah. <laughs> um no the bolivian quinoa we believe it is truly superior to other quinoa sources from other areas so it's an heirloom seed it's never been genetically modified um and so it's it has uh really great qualities when you when you cook it it's going to cook up to be a lot it's a larger seed uh, it cooks up to be a lot fluffier than quinoa from other areas. So quinoa that's grown in Peru, for example, um, the Peruvian government did a really great job trying to increase their exports of quinoa because they, they realized there's so much demand, global demand, right? But in order to increase their exports so much, they started planting uh, twice a year and they started planting near the ocean, uh, which is not where quinoa is naturally growing, so they had to genetically modify it to make it be able to be pesticide resistant. They also spray it with a lot of pesticides by the ocean. So they don't have to do any of that um, in the Bolivian Altiplano because that's kind of where quinoa was meant to be grown. Yeah. 
cold and high altitude and the soil there um it's been you know it's been fertilized by llamas for for thousands of years right so there's a really unique profile to the soil there um, and so you get this really great seed and this great flavor from the Bolivian quinoa that you don't get anywhere else. Um, if you you would see it, if you put the seed side by side, it's clear. One's you know. just much bigger than right. the, the other one. Right, exactly. And what you can do when it's bigger also is toast it. So you you're not you don't burn it when it's um, small seed is really easy to mm. burn. And when you toast the quinoa, you get this really nice nutty flavor, like just like you would toast rice a lot. You know, yeah. a lot of people. That it, it toasted makes coconut. Different. I've had the toasted coconut stuff too, um, yeah. because you. So you have the clusters, then you have the puffs, and you do have toasted products too, right? Right. Yeah. So this would be our, our toasted quinoa grain. So this, you know, maybe you can see it there. Um, yeah. The seeds. Um, so this is meant to be simmered. You know, it's just a rice substitute. You use it um, like you would rice. And this is toasted, and it's Bolivian. This is our Bolivian flag. Here. Yes. Can you and then we have right our, out of the package, though. You, I mean, you can put like if you're a diehard quinoa aficionado, yeah. you can put it on your salad and get it right out of the package. But most people it's, cook it like rice. Right, exactly. Got it. Uh, you can put it in a stir fry. You can um, you can bake with it. We also have quinoa flakes, um, which you can tell I've been eating. The top is open, but um, I eat them for breakfast every day. So you can eat them for breakfast like oatmeal. You can use them in baking. You can make protein balls out of them. And and this also we use Bolivian flakes uh, that are toasted. Is that the like a, the hot cereal piece? Yeah. So exactly. they use people eat it like oatmeal, essentially. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it gets super quick cooking, like a minute like and a half. I'll have to try that. Would the the toasted quinoa work well? I've just experimented with um, like putting them in coconut milk and letting mm -hmm. them soak up, like uh, yeah, like, like a overnight. a rice pudding type of thing. Yeah, would, yeah. Would that work good for for something like that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And that toasted just gives you, just really enhances the flavor even more, the toasting. Yeah, and you guys, if anyone, they have, you, you go to I Heart Quinoa. And by the way, it's spelled out phonetically. It's not the Q, but it's I Heart and then K-E-E-N-W-A-H. Um, you can check out, actually, a lot of the recipes on there, which uh, all look really good Yes, uh, yeah, well. that's that's the the favorite part of our website. You know, you can track where people are going, and that's where people are always going. Really, the what's days. your yeah. go-to quinoa uh, recipe at home for the family? Um, my favorite is uh, just regular toasted quinoa fluffed with a fork, and then putting um, avocado, olive oil, and um, uh, coarse sea salt on it. Mm. It's a really simple combination, but it just it's it's so delicious. Yeah. There's one person that we were talking before about. You guys should talk because it would be a perfect combination. This guy interviewed, um, it's uh, Jacobson salt, and they make it all kind of handmade, coarse salt. So you guys should talk from a, a personal perspective, from a business perspective. I could see I bought their black garlic uh, salt. It would probably go really well on, on your yeah. products too. I, I see a collaboration in our future. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I guess the other thing I was, was curious about is um, you were talking about kind of the goals, you know, 2018, a big push. And um, talk about a little bit about what's kind of on the horizon for iHeart Humor. Yeah, I think 20, 2018 is going to be a big year for us because um, we're finally at the table with um, some much bigger retailers. You know, at the beginning, like we talked about, we're going store to store and just selling to, you know, uh, mom and pop health food stores, but now we're sitting at the table with Kroger, with Target, with uh, Ahold, with CVS, and so um, those are our top priorities for 2018, focusing on those four retailers and making sure that we execute really successfully there because those are opportunities that, you know, they only come once and you wait a long time to get them, and so we want to make sure we really support them um, as well as we can and develop really strong strategies you know, tailor our strategies for each retailer because each retailer is different and has different, you know, tools in their toolkit. So yeah. we're really excited about that. And for a long time, it was the two of you. At what point did you decide you needed to bring on someone else? Um, when I was staying up till two o'clock in the morning, every morning processing orders, <laughs> I was like this, there's too much. So uh, yeah, I mean, you get to a point. It's a, it's a little bit of a step function, right? You can't hire somebody like when you just have too much work because you can't afford them. So you have to have way too much work on your plate, and then you can afford to You're hire somebody. Into it. 
Right. How, so what did you decide to hire for first? What was the the biggest thing you so were looking for? hire an operations for? person first. Somebody to just, because you're, you're working so much in the business that you can't work on growing the business at a certain point, right? You're processing all the orders and ordering the ingredients and just all the logistics of the business are, you know, and all the financial aspect as well, you know, processing the invoices and collecting from people who didn't pay and making sure you're um, doing closing your books every month like that. All of that takes a lot of time. And so we hired an operations person to, to take all of those sort of day to day tasks on. Yeah, especially when you have so many cool. vendors. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of them don't pay. On time. <laughs> what um what would be next like for the company for the expansion? What would you look for next as far as bringing another skill set on? Um, so marketing uh, for sure was our second hire because, you know, like we talked about, nobody knows who you are. And so um, having somebody on board who can help develop the brand and, um, you know, what is what do you stand for and what, you know, all of the social media communications, all of the, our event management, being at gluten-free shows and vegan festivals and... Um, endless amounts probably of those things, amounts. which right, do you choose. Exactly. Yeah, and, and if you don't have somebody to work on that, I think you're not creating a brand, um, and that's really what we wanted to do is, is be the the brand that you know people think of when they think of quinoa. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I think it's sales. You know, we just we need more people going into stores and being feet on the street. There's only so many. Again, you're busy running the company of a family. There's only so many conferences and things you can go to. Which ones do you choose to spend your time at? Um, the natural products expo is for sure the most important for our brand, just mm -hmm. because that you know we fit squarely in that space. Mm -hmm. So there's a natural products expo east and west, yep. um, and then after that there's fancy food shows and um, a winter one and a summer one, and then after that there's a tier of um, so those are all sort of trade shows where you can meet grocery buyers mm -hmm. and industry folks, and then there's the other set is the uh, consumer facing shows. So there we really focus on gluten free and. Uh, vegan and vegetarian because that's like our you know the most die-hard excited consumers and so yeah. we want to reach as many of them as we can and then what so would you say has worked best for marketing and what hasn't worked of what you thought would work for getting the word out <sighs> yeah it's, it's tough it's um that's the age-old question there's definitely no silver bullet i would say um yeah. <laughs> everybody uh says you know what should i do next um we did a lot of demos and the demos i think are um Demos at the, grocery stores, or where do you do them? Grocery stores, yeah. right? Yeah. So bringing your table and your samples, and you know, getting people to try it, and then they can buy it right there. So it's that's nice because it's really close to the point of sale. I think you need to have some money. Uh, you don't get an immediate ROI on that. I think it's a very long ROI. So if we looked at how many bags we sold at each at each product demo, we were never breaking even. So right. so you need to have some money on hand if you're going to take that strategy. Um, uh, social media has been a great way for us to kind of get the word out um, at, at a pretty low cost. You know, you need to have this either have the skill set in house or be able to hire somebody to take beautiful pictures because that really is what engages Especially people. Especially for your type of product, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. For food, it's it's just a must have. So, but that's a way to reach a lot of people and you know get to get the word out pretty effectively. Yeah. Um. um so. Sir, this has been fantastic. I have one, two last questions, but I want to just tell people, ch go check out iHeartQuinoa.com. Yeah, like I said, spelled phonetically, K-E-E-N-W-A-H.com. Sir, I always ask because it's Inspired Insider, what has been the lowest moment in the business? And then what has been, on the flip side, what's been one of the you know proudest moments? Um, the lowest moment... Uh, I would say was we had a, a recall mm. early on in our in our development. Um, it happened at um, our small co-packer, wh whom we no longer work with, and uh, it was it was pretty gross negligence on their part. But mm. they did that when the FDA was there, and uh, I thought we were right exactly. I definitely thought we weren't going to make it. I thought you know I was I was on vacation with my family and I spent the whole vacation you know in a room like trying to sort out you know what was what product went where and trace it and talk to the FDA and tell them how we're going to remedy it and it was um, for sure that was the lowest point. Uh, yeah. I guess it's a good thing when you were small and didn't have as much distribution because it's right. it was probably a headache and horrible then, but now it would have been even worse. So yeah, for sure, and it's probably good that it happened because I think it made us realize you know how we need to be how it is super important to have that traceability and, and to really have confidence in your manufacturing partners. Um, but yeah, that was, it was That's, scary. 
I'm yeah, I get nervous even thinking about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the flip side, what's one of the the proudest moments? On the flip side, I would say um, you know anytime we get into uh, a retailer. It's just this really joyous moment and something where you're just like, you you know, you're screaming out loud like, yeah, we did it. Um, yeah. That is something that um, it's really a roller coaster of emotions. And I think that's why I like doing this is it you feel it so viscerally, right? The lows are really low and the highs are really high. And so um, getting that um, sort of affirmation and like, okay, we just got into another 200 stores. Oh, we just got into another 600 stores. Yeah. Like that feeling that's is, amazing. yeah, exactly. In parallel. Sarah, congratulations. This is, you know, on, on everything you guys have accomplished. It's not easy. And uh, you continue to strive ahead and be successful. So um, everyone should check out iHeartQuinoa.com. Where else should we point people towards online? Um, you can buy, them on, buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Thrive Market, um, iHerb, um, pretty much anywhere, you know, that sells natural products. But uh, All right. Yeah. Thank you again, Sarah. I want to be the first one. Thank you so much for your time on this. Yeah, thanks for having, having me on. appreciate it. Nice to talk with you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.